Hey everyone, welcome in. My name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and I've had a lot of people ask me for some basic rigging tutorials. It's a basic UVing tutorial, so I'm going to try to start going through and doing small 5 to 10 minute tutorials on basic concepts and advanced concepts. Depending on your skill level, this tutorial may or may not be for you, but I'm hoping to show you how to properly rig a robotic arm with an included piston. Also for this tutorial, I've included all of the files in the description in my Google Drive. If you want to access them, download them, there is an unrigged variant and there is a rigged variant. You can open up those files and you can play with them yourself, or you can try to go through this entire process with me. So without saying much more, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so you've built your model, you've created a robotic arm or some sort of landing gear, whatever it is you're actually working with. How do you actually start to rig this? So one of the basic things that I like to do is using joints. Uh, joints are incredibly powerful, even for non-organic shapes. And one of the first things I'll do is I'll start off and we are going to make sure that we freeze our transformations. We're gonna go to modify, freeze transformations. We'll do the same thing here. Same thing here, same thing here. And then as well, just go ahead and delete your history. That way we're starting fresh, we're clean. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on rigging these two pieces because currently if you move them, they're not doing anything, they're not connected in any way, and functionally they just don't work. The first thing we wanna look at, I don't know. What we wanna to start to look at is the orientation of our pivot points. And currently we're right in the center, which is good, but the problem is is that we're not really centered in any of the other axes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold D to change our pivot settings. You're gonna turn on snap to point, and then we're going to move this over. It's probably going to be better to do this in the top view just so we can make sure that we actually get it centered because currently it's not. And right there should be good. So let's make sure that we are centered here. We are. And we're centered here. And we are. The next thing is, let's just adjust this, this other one. We can notice that our pivot point is down here. Doesn't make any sense. We're going to move it up here and then make sure we're centered in both, and we are. So now that we have our pivot points centered, the other thing you'll want to do is make sure that on your pistons, your pivot points are centered to the rotation portion of the piston, wherever the head connects to the body. And you can see here in the side view, we are centered and ready to go with the piston. So first things first, let's create some bones. So let's go ahead and go into our side view. We're gonna to change to the rigging subset of tools, and then we're gonna go over here to our rigging tab. Now we're, we're ready to kind of work with this. You're going to hit create joints. We're going to create a joint up here at the top. Don't worry so much about where it falls yet. We're going to adjust it later. We're going to create one right here where we want this pivot point. And if you still have your snap to point enabled, it should just snap right to where it needs to be. And then the last one, we're going to just point right here. We're going to hit Q escape to get out of that tool. Go here. So now we have a working or we have a joint system. So if we look at this, when we move it, we'll turn off the snap point everything follows itself. It's one linked chain of joints. The only problem that I'm having here is it's not exactly centered. So we're gonna select the base joint. We're gonna turn back on snap to point and then we're just gonna snap it. Oops. And then we're just gonna snap it right to the center of this guy. And then the same down here. Your rotation may have gotten a little messed up. You can just adjust it and fix it. And then the same thing here, we're going to drag this guy to the center point and then just fix our rotation so the joint is nice and clean. And that is centered. So now if we look at our joints, we should be centered here. And we're just about there. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we are centered here. And we're centered up here. All right, so we have our joint system. So how do we link the joints to the object? Rigging is kind of a step-by-step -step process. You have to think from the ground up. So when we're looking at this, we're going to create our joint system, which we've already done. And then we're going to link our objects to our joints. There's two ways you can do this. The way we're going to do today is more of a mechanical-based way and less of like a skin-based way. The skin-based way of joint rigging is going to be used for things traditionally like creatures, characters, anything that actually has like a living skin that you're trying to replicate. But in this case, we're not worried about that. So we're going to take this top piece and we're going to click the top joint. And we're going to hit parent. Now when we select the top joint, it should be attached to it. 
And we're going to do the same thing for here. I'm going to select that middle joint, hit parent, P, and we should be good to go. If we rotate this joint, you can see that they are linked together. And the same thing for up here. Everything should follow. If you have something broken here, look over in your outliner and look at the way that everything's linked up. This is how it should look. Okay, so we have that. So we're gonna create our IK handle. The IK handle is gonna handle a lot of the joint movement for us. And it's gonna behave like you would be if you were extending your arm out, your joints follow each other and they kind of allow you to get that reach. This is the same kind of setup that we're gonna follow. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna hit create IK handle. Create the IK handle, select the top joint, select the bottom joint. That's an IK handle. So now if you move it, you'll notice it functions in a way that actually makes sense. If you overextend it, IK handles tend to twist and cause issues. There are ways you can lock this down, but we're not gonna talk about that today in this tutorial. So we're gonna reset that back to its original point. At this point in the process, if you notice your model got twisted somehow, or if your joints aren't lining up anymore, go back and freeze your transformations on your joints because that's going to allow you to correct that issue. Okay, so now that we have our working joint, the next thing we have to do is get the piston added into this mix. Again, if we select the piston, it's not really doing anything right now. Either side does nothing. So the way we're gonna correct this is we're gonna select the bottom of our piston, making sure that both of our top and bottom, the actual pivot points are centered to where they would pivot in real life. We're gonna select the bottom, select the top. We're going to go to constrain. We're going to go to aim and options box. Once you hit the options box, just go up here, reset your settings, and then maintain offset, make sure it's selected, and hit apply. Then we're gonna do the reverse of that. We're gonna select the top, select the bottom, and hit apply one more time. Now, if you actually grab the bottom of your piston and move it, you'll notice the top follows it. Same with the top. If your piston's a little too long like mine is, don't really don't worry too, too much about it. You can adjust the model later if you have to, but there's really no need to stress about it right now. So now that all of this is working, we have our joint IK, everything's functioning in theory, but nothing's connecting. We need to look at how do we connect this to the actual body itself. So the way I've done this before and the way I usually do this is I will go into my side view. I'm gonna take the top of this and I'm going to parent it P to that top joint. And I'll take the bottom of this and I'll select that bottom joint and I'll hit parent. Now from here, if we go up, we select this you move now, you can see you have a working piston that is fully usable, riggable, and ready to go. But I hope you found this helpful. I hope these mini tutorials will be something that you guys like and enjoy. If you did enjoy this, please let me know down in the comments. It does help me plan and figure out what kind of content I'm doing in the future. And if you came here from Instagram because of the quick tip today, welcome on in and thank you for being here. That's it for this video and I will see you all in the next one.